In this video, we're going to talk about bilirubin metabolism. Bilirubin metabolism is important because hyperbilirubinemia is a condition where you have high amounts of bilirubin that can lead to jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and of the eyes, for example. And this could indicate something sinister. So bilirubin is formed uh, by breakdown of heme present in hemoglobin. So the story starts with an old red blood cell, which enters what's called the reticuloendothelial system, which is in your liver and in your spleen. Here, they are engulfed by macrophages. The red blood cells contain many hemoglobin molecules normally, which are broken down to heme and globin, hence the name hemoglobin. Heme is further broken down by two enzymes, uh, heme oxygenase followed by biliverdin reductase, forming bilirubin and iron. The iron and the globin is recycled to make more red blood cells. The bilirubin formed is in an unconjugated form, so it's unconjugated bilirubin, and it is lipid soluble. And so it has to bind to something, and albumin is the protein which acts as a transporter. So this unconjugated bilirubin uh, is bound to albumin, but it also can bind to other things such as high-density lipoproteins, and less often it can circulate freely in an unbound form. Bilirubin is also formed by the breakdown of other things such as myoglobin and cytochrome enzymes. Anyway, this albumin-bilirubin complex circulates around and then enters the liver system where it disassociates. The unconjugated bilirubin is taken up efficiently by the hepatocytes while the albumin remains in circulation. Bilirubin enters the hepatocytes through facilitated diffusion, essentially through a concentration gradient. Here, they undergo what is called glucuronidation. This process makes substances such as the bilirubin more water-soluble, which allows it to be excreted in bile and in urine. Glucuronidation is carried out by a family of enzymes called uridine diphosphoglucuronate glucuronosyl transferase, or UGT. In the case of bilirubin, uh, it is bilirubin UGT. The unconjugated bilirubin is now conjugated bilirubin and is water soluble. It is secreted into the biliary system and is a component of bile. Conjugated bilirubin travels down the bile duct where it joins with the pancreatic duct and into the duodenum through the ampulla vata. The conjugated bilirubin is now in the small intestine where it continues its journey. Majority of bilirubin here is actually conjugated, 98% obviously and only a small proportion is unconjugated bilirubin. Conjugated bilirubin, remember, is water-soluble, and so it is not absorbed across the lipid membrane of the small intestinal epithelium. In comparison, the unconjugated bilirubin fraction is partially reabsorbed and undergoes uh, enterohepatic circulation, which is where it travels through the portal system back to the liver. So entero, intestine, hepatic, liver, circulation. This unconjugated bilirubin can then undergo uh, glucuronidation again to become a conjugated bilirubin and water-soluble. Going back, this conjugated bilirubin actually continues traveling to the large intestine where it is exposed to so much bacteria. Here, the bilirubin is reduced by bacterial enzymes to a series of molecules termed urobilinogens. Urobilinogens are partly absorbed in the bowel and undergoes again enterohepatic uh, circulation, where the urobilinogen will enter the liver to get processed again. Now, the fraction that is actually not cleared by the liver will enter the general circulation and is partly excreted in urine. Urine bilinogen gives urine its yellow color. Majority of urobilinogens is actually excreted in feces. 
the urobilinogens here are further oxidized to form urobilins, including uh, stercobilin. Oxidized urobilinogens, which I mentioned, gives feces its brown color. And so that concludes the uh, basic metabolism of bilirubin. Now, jaundice is where you have high amounts of bilirubin in the blood, hyperbilirubinemia. And it can be either conjugated or unconjugated bilirubin. Clinically, hyperbilirubinemia can be divided into two major categories. You have unconjugated bilirubin mainly or conjugated bilirubin. So disorders, for example, associated with mainly unconjugated bilirubinemia include things that do not really involve the liver. So for example, dyserythropoiesis, which is abnormality of red blood cell production. And so you have a release of bilirubin into circulation. Extravascular hemolysis, which is basically death of the red blood cells outside the vessels, leading to a release of unconjugated bilirubin. Intravascular hemolysis, similarly, is damage of the red blood cells within the vessel, releasing the unconjugated bilirubin. Extravasation, which is essentially when the red blood cells um, go into the tissues, causing bruising and the leakage of the bilirubin. Certain medications such as gentamicin and some antiretroviral drugs can elevate unconjugated bilirubin levels. And then you also have Gilbert syndrome, which is deficiency in the bilirubin UGT mentioned earlier, which means that you have high amounts of unconjugated bilirubin and then yellowing of the skin. Now, the second category of hyperbilirubinemia are disorders associated with conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And this can be further divided into, into intrahepatic causes or posthepatic causes, also known as biliary obstruction. So focusing on the intrahepatic causes, these include viral hepatitis, alcoholic hepatitis, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, drugs and toxins such as alkylated steroids, sepsis, perineoplastic syndromes associated with malignancies such as renal cell carcinoma. They can cause something called a Stauffer syndrome. TPN, post-operative patients, and this is multifactorial cause. Liver infiltrations, so things such as you know, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis can precipitate intrahepatic cholestasis. The other group that causes high amounts of conjugated bilirubin include biliary obstruction, also known as post-hepatic causes. And uh, this includes cholelithiasis, gallbladder adenocarcinoma, biliary cholangiocarcinoma, Ascending cholangitis, which is really an infection of the uh, bile duct. Primary sclerosing cholangitis. Strictures after an invasive procedure such as an ERCP. Pancreatic cancer. Some parasitic infections can cause obstruction. Lymphoma can cause obstruction. AIDS, cholangiopathy. Acute and chronic pancreatitis is a very important cause. So investigating jaundice, um, before learning about investigations, we need to understand what the liver function test blood test is. So the liver function test is, a, uh, is to assess your liver function. And we look at the bilirubin and also four main enzymes. So high bilirubin, as we know, leads to jaundice. And there are many causes that we've learned. The first two enzymes are the AST and ALT, which are your transaminases and are predominantly found in the liver. GGT and ALP are enzymes found in the biliary system. So if AST and ALT go up, this signifies liver tissue injury. If GGT and ALP go up, this signifies biliary tract injury or intrahepatic 
are biliary duct problems. The initial investigation to order in someone with jaundice is the liver function test, including bilirubin, but also albumin and also checking the international normalized ratio, or INR. The bilirubin can then be further differentiated into conjugated bilirubin or unconjugated bilirubin. In jaundice with unconjugated bilirubin, the liver function tests are not deranged. This is because they are usually due to problems with red blood cells. So, in this scenario, consider ordering a hemolytic screen, including a full blood count, blood film, reticulocyte count, haptoglobin, lactate dehydrogenase, and the Coombs test. For conjugated bilirubin, Think about, you know, intrahepatic causes of jaundice, which will cause the LFTs to be deranged. The AST and ALT are typically high because it's intrahepatic. High AST to ALT ratio signifies alcoholic hepatitis, whereas high ALT to AST mostly cause other liver diseases, including viral hepatitis. An elevated INR with low albumin would also indicate severe hepatic disease or dysfunction. In this scenario, you have to continue and uh, perform what's called a hepatitis screen. So you perform blood tests to look for other causes of liver disease, including hepatitis B and hepatitis C serology, autoimmune hepatitis, checking uh, iron studies to look for hematochromatosis, amongst many other things. For conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and suspected biliary obstruction, the conjugated bilirubin is high and the liver function test is also deranged. The enzymes ALP and GGT are higher than the AST and the ALT. For biliary obstruction, you need to do imaging to look for evidence of intra or extrahepatic bile duct dilation. So, for example, doing a liver and biliary ultrasound, a CT abdomen, or an ERCP and MRCP. So, in summary, we looked at an approach to jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and then the conjunctiva. Clinically, you have elevated bilirubin, which can be further differentiated into conjugated or unconjugated bilirubin.